2019, they said you won't make it past the end of 2019. You need that surgery wow. within the next 90 days. And I just said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing superhuman really hard. Hmm. And I went back and did my last echo and they just said, we don't know what you're doing, but your ejection fraction's looking pretty good. You know, when you want to get the surgery, get the surgery because you wow. can't fix an architectural problem per se. When, when the valve's got an issue, you can take all the supplements all day long, but if you can reduce the inflammatory condition and you can improve the oxygen absorption and uptake to the 11 organ systems, you can stave off a lot of the symptoms Crazy. that would cause or that is a result of mitral valve prolapse. Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. Today is gonna to be a show where you learn and hear things you have never heard before, and you will learn things that you've never been taught before. And that's because we're gonna to talk today very specifically, broad ranging, we're talking about your health, your wellness, uh, I guess a little bit of anti-aging, and you know, hopefully just you living a better lifestyle where you feel more fit, strong, and that your well-being increases. And the gentleman to my left is a friend of mine, and he is uniquely qualified to talk about this topic today. So Jason Tabot from Da Vinci Medical, welcome to the house and welcome to the show. It's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me, Ed. We've, we've definitely talked enough times from this house, but never in person. So yeah, super I'm exciting. I'm telling you guys today, you're gonna learn some things. This is gonna be really interesting stuff for you, heavy note taking. So Jason is the creator of something called the Superhuman Protocol. And the way I want you all to think about remembering it is earth, wind, and fire. If you just think about those things as we go through the show, earth, wind, and fire, those of you that are old enough, it's one of my favorite bands of all time, so it's easy to recall, but we wanna talk a little bit about this protocol that you've got, and it starts with, we're gonna do basic things that anybody can afford yeah. Yeah. to do, all the way up to stuff that's pretty damn pricey yeah. that not everybody listening to this is gonna be able to do. I've been blessed and fortunate enough that I am participating in the full protocol, so to speak, and I'm new to it. So I'm a great you know, guinea pig for my audience. But let's start out with the earth part of it. Sure. What is magnetism in general? Well, we need to go back a little bit. Um, maybe we go back 4,000 years. 4,000 years, okay. When earth's magnetic field, or what we call the electron, free electron coming from earth, was about two and a half gauss. Now, that's a, that's a fancy way of saying we actually had a charge, right? When your cell phone dies, what do we do? Mm -hmm. We put it on the induction charger because mm -hmm. there's a battery in there. Right. You have trillions of batteries in your body. They're called cells. So 4,000 years ago, we were at about two and a half gauss, which is 250 microtesla for the nerds out there. <laughs> and what, what happened was we were walking around and we were on our own induction charger and we were charging the cells. Okay. And when the cells get charged, they separate okay. instead of clumping. When a cell clumps or a cell, when a cell sticks to each other, it can't get as much oxygen. Okay. That's important. And it can't carry that oxygen to the 11 organ systems. All five liters of blood need to get to 70,000 plus miles of circulatory system. So we didn't think about, hmm, do we need to walk on planet Earth to stay alkaline? Because right. when you charge the cell, Negative 25 millivolts on a cell membrane mm. is a pH of 7.35. And everyone's saying, I need alkaline food, yeah, I need alkaline, alkaline water. Right. Uh, actually, if you walk around on the beach right out here for just 30 minutes and you measure your pH or you look at your blood under a microscope, you're gonna look like a different person. You're gonna look like the person you should look like. Okay, let's keep going, we'll go back and forth. I wanna, every part of this I wanna break down and understand even from my own edification because I'm doing this, right? Yeah. Okay, so cells clumping together the consequences of that it is lack of oxygen and think about a freeway if we're looking down at a freeway from a helicopter yep. and every car is magnetized to each other yep suddenly we have a traffic jam mm -hmm. right and the sides of the freeway have pressure on it mm -hmm. high blood pressure mm -hmm. and none of the cells can go into the microvessels arterioles venules capillaries this is a disaster. Yep. And so if we charge all of those cells, they become negatively charged, they separate. And now every cell can flow from point A to point B like the cars on the Autobahn in Germany. Okay. So we have delivery system again. Got it. All our blood gets to go from head to toe and all 11 organ systems, 11 of our organ systems, they need to be fertilized. They need nutrient rich oxygenated blood or each of those, one of those systems or many of them start to show a symptom. Mm -hmm. And the doc goes, 
well, we're showing these levels are here and this level is there, so let's put you on a medication. Right. We don't look at, well, wait a minute, that the endocrine system's missing some critical nutrients. Okay. It's missing fertilizer. Okay. It's not getting perfusion. And we throw a drug at it, which will halt the symptom, mm -hmm. which makes you think everything's good now, but we never went after the root cause. You go after that drug, uh, you, you go off that drug, mm. you go back to where you were. So it's a Band-Aid over a gushing Completely. gunshot wound. They're all Band-Aids. Okay, so, so here we go. So first things first is separated cells can receive more oxygen. Correct. More oxygen means we're getting those out to the, the organs that need to receive that oxygen. There's a lot of ways, there are some ways to get those red blood cells getting more magnetized and separated. You're saying one of them is just literally like earthing. Yeah. Earthing, why don't you describe that a little bit? Earthing, as I understand it, is basically getting yourself touching the earth yeah. on a pretty regular basis, right? And that gives you that magnetic charge, even though it's less of a charge than it was 4,000 years ago. It's still enough. Okay. And there's 20 peer-reviewed scientific studies, peer-reviewed, that prove without a doubt that Many conditions, I mean, we're talking hundreds, okay. are resolved just walking around barefoot. Okay. Go Google it. Okay. Grounding, peer-reviewed studies. It's, it's crazy. So somebody who has, uh, maybe they're constantly in sympathetic, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is a fight or flight mode. This is causing cortisol. This is causing inflammation. If you go walk around on Mother Earth for about a half an hour, and you could measure your parasympathetic going to going out of sympathetic, going into parasympathetic, our autonomic nervous system calms down. Mm -hmm. We actually can reduce inflammation by walking around barefoot. Okay. We can improve the blood flow and get all of our systems, organ systems, what they need. Okay. So we can even reset circadian rhythm. So let's say you go yeah, this out is of the country and you come back. Back here in California, you're gonna reset your circadian rhythms, your sleep cycle, back to California. Okay, stay on that. This is fascinating. I mean, you've told me that when you travel, you go different time zones. Best thing you try to do when you get there is you go hit the beach barefooted. Period. And you're saying that my time clock will literally recalibrate itself for by that doing location. That. that is so freaking unbelievable. Yeah, is it? that why, for example, I think everyone's experienced this too. Is that why, and does it matter where you're doing this? Meaning, for me, I'm barefoot around certain, but when I'm barefoot on the beach, is it just in my head, or is there something about that's, I'm actually literally touching the earth because I'm so close to it on the sand, or no difference? The, no, so you can actually be on concrete. Okay. As long, because concrete has moisture. And that concrete will conduct. Concrete has moisture, got and it. And will conduct. But ultimately, you want to get as close to the dirt, moist dirt as possible. So if you can go outside and just sit there, and barefoot and just take your feet and just wiggle your toes in the dirt, mm. you're getting some pretty amazing therapeutic results. Okay. And if you don't believe this, and it's, it's hard for people to go, well, how come this isn't everywhere? Actually, it is if you just look for it. Mm. There, again, 20 peer-reviewed studies, go to YouTube, there's a fantastic video called Earthing, the, the groundbreaking research of, uh, I believe called grounding, it's the official okay. video. And it recites quite a few of the studies I have to give credit where it's due. Clint Ober is the guy that brought this to light. Okay. And that's why some of these studies are being done. But after a 20 hour flight to you know, a destination, mm -hmm. you know, we're tired, we're hungry, we're probably, our acidity has probably gone through the roof because of the garbage that we ate while we, while we were on our trip. And you just get to that location, you walk around barefoot and get 50% or more of the body exposed to sunlight. Yeah. And we'll get into light and breathe that good clean oxygen because you know when you're in for example not when i was in bora bora we know the oxygen level there uh, not not the purity but the quality is, yep. is very high in 30 minutes all my aches and pains right gone yes and i'm i'm charged and ready for the vacation okay so, this so is that's fast. my superhuman protocol just walking on the beach half naked breathing good quality oxygen okay so the, by the way it's important everybody listen to this i've learned a lot about this a lot of you live on second third fourth stories in an apartment building you work on one all day you're even further separated from this magnetic charge of the earth almost all day long so something as basic as earthing can help alkalize the body separate these red blood cells we're more susceptible to oxygen this is a really significant basic cost-free way that you can begin to upgrade your superhuman protocol for yourself. Now, we can then step somewhere that's a little bit more sophisticated than that, which is what I've started doing. So talk a little bit about what you've been recommending for people in terms of it's PEMF, -E correct? Correct. So talk a little bit about that, what is it, and then how do we get it in our body based on this pad that you've had me 
laying on on it recently. So PEMF therapy is it's been around a while and mm -hmm. there's a form of it on almost all spacecraft because when we leave when we leave Earth, we, we're highly disconnected from our magnetic field. In mm -hmm. fact, oxygen and magnes uh, magnetism are, they're married. If we were to block all magnetic fields, if I were to put myself in a very strong Faraday cage, yeah. which would block everything, you could potentially go into heart failure. Okay. Because the cells will charge up, they'll charge up positive, they'll, they'll connect, okay. they'll stick to each other. No more oxygen transport, no more blood flow. You'll go into defib. Okay. Dr. Jane Hunt did this study. Yeah, right? that's right. This yeah. is crazy stuff. So the origins go back in quite a ways, and it got a, it's a first FDA clearance in, in the late 70s mm. uh, for non-union bone fractures because bones are piezoelectric. They are literally responding to a magnetic field, and there's something in a bone called osteoclast, osteoblast remodeling. Mm. And when you play this music, so to speak, or this magnetic field back to the bone, the bone remodels again. That's amazing. It starts to take a non-union bone fracture, meaning not touching, and grow back. Amazing. So if you, if you have a non-union bone fracture, your, your orthopedic surgeon will probably have you wear a special device yeah. that is doing PEMF yep. around the clock. Yep. So that's evolved into full body mats. Now we can lay on them, yep. and we can lay on them for eight, 16, 24 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. And we're basically getting 14 hours worth of grounding in eight minutes. In it has a minutes. residual effect okay. of 14 hours. So we do it in the morning, and we do it at night, right around sunset. Mm -hmm. And so we have coverage. We have 28 hours of residual if yep. we do this mat every day. And you know, you don't need to lay on it unless you have blood and lungs. Those are the only. <laughs> well, if you have blood. Seriously, okay, right. if if you don't have those two, don't you don't need the body mat. Seriously. Right. And in my opinion, everybody at one point is going to be on PEMF because walking barefoot, for some of us, it's not practical. It's not mm -hmm. safe. Yep. Uh, some don't like it, mm -hmm. and, and some people just can't because of where they live. Mm -hmm. So they need that replacement. As Earth's magnetic field declines and it's gone down 80% in the last 4,000 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. it went from two and a half gauss, 250 microtesla of unbelievable charge, to half a gauss. Mm -hmm. That's a big drop in such a short period of time. In the span of Earth, that's 4,000 years is nothing. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous. So this mat, by the way, and by the way, you'll be able to go to Da Vinci Medical, what's the website if they wanted to go see the actual Da Vinci mat? Medical USA .com. Dot com. By the way, I'm not selling anything, guys, at all. There's there's nothing in it for me. Um, I'm just suggesting to you that if the, if there's nothing in your budget to do it, I think we've all in our life had sort of the anecdotal evidence of walking on grass and barefooted or walking on the beach barefooted and just feeling better, mm -hmm. just feeling uh, a sense of wellness and, and well-being. So if that's what you can do to begin to improve your health, and that's a basic recommendation we've made today, game changer for you. If you step up a little bit though, and you get one of these mats, I've been using them, I, I, I'm so new at it, I can't say to everybody what all the applications have been for me, but there's like 7,000 different little messages that go out to our cells through this mat at one given time. Elaborate on that a little bit, it's fascinating to me. So the, the Earth is giving us one magnetic field mm -hmm. and there's a frequency, it's a Schumann pulse, 7.85, and there are other frequencies that cells like to hear. Just like certain music will resonate well to you. Yep. You know, you start dancing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, certain songs I play after sure. something happens great. And to trigger. Boom. Yep. Cells have receptors. And if we play back the right frequency to those receptors, we can actually get them back on track. So there's different cell types and cell groups. And if so, if you know the frequencies that can, let's say, open up the calcium channels, mm -hmm. which may have been shut mm -hmm. from 5G. We can fire that right back up if we've got the right frequencies coming in from the body mat. So we take PEMF a step further. It's not just, yeah, okay, it's a magnetic field, it's mm -hmm. a charger, we're putting half a gauss through the body. We're actually giving you different programs, programs that can vitalize you, for example, if you want to do oxygen therapy. Mm -hmm. We have a program that will boost the oxygen transport before you exercise mm -hmm. with oxygen. But let's say at night when the sun sets, we want that mind to be calmed down. Mm -hmm. We want to relax the autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. Okay, We want to get out of sympathetic. So we have a relaxed program there that mm -hmm. will actually talk to the body and the mind mm -hmm. and get us into a state 
a different brainwave state, because right now you and I are in beta. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. We're almost always in beta. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're like me, you're in beta even when you're in delta. Yeah. Okay? You think we're thinking, I, we're, you think you're, you're not running. thinking when you're sleeping, but yeah. trust me, the, the dreams prove us otherwise. Yeah. So if you do a relaxed program at night, we can absolutely get into a smoother, slower brainwave state. Mm -hmm. We can get out of beta, get into alpha, theta, mm -hmm. and hopefully have a longer delta brainwave state. And I can get, if I can get a better delta session in my sleep, if, it, if it's a little bit longer than yours, I can sleep fewer hours than you and feel much better. You get better sleep, right? Yeah, but that guy that's waking up all the time, yep. that's a problem because he never gets into delta and that's when we make human growth hormone, which is gonna repair and regenerate the body. So you need that delta. Mm -hmm. You've gotta get really good sleep. One really great tip about that is just stop drinking water two hours before you go to bed. Right, you told me you that. You drink water, what do you think the body's gonna do? Wake you right up, the mm -hmm. bladder says, uh-uh, out. Mm -hmm. But uh, simple things, because we're, we're doing very complex things where we're talking about 7,000 different messages of different cells, and we're talking about separating red blood cells, but so, a couple simple things I want to break down. One thing you recommend me, I drink a lot of water all day long. I hydrate very early in the morning throughout the day. I have stopped doing water two hours before I go to bed. Again, guys, this is your own call. I got to tell you, I'm sleeping much deeper. I'm getting up much less f frequently. Second thing is, no matter what today, out of the first part of this podcast, the show, you ought to go Google and look up magnetism. Yeah. You ought to just look it up, see the impact it has on your body, and you ought to look up PEMF technology too. I think that just would be an education for you to have in the back of your mind, a goal to work towards something that you could acquire right now. I love the idea of, you know, even when we travel, getting out and putting our feet on the ground by the beach and resetting our clock. It's just, these are wonderful things. So step one so far is we're separating these red blood cells. We've kind of alkalized our system to some extent. And now we're receptive now to taking in more oxygen. Isn't this good? I'm actually getting a little bit of this now. Awesome. You're proud of me. Yep. Yep. So now the second step, that's earth. Wind is oxygen. So the superhuman protocol now is magnetism, now oxygen. Yeah. So if I'm, a, um, if I'm not in the protocol, mm -hmm. but I have now gone, done some earthing, I put my feet on the ground a little bit, do you recommend at that time I do something that is at least increasing my oxygen intake and my heart rate? Well, you can, and you can exercise a little bit, mm -hmm. and you can, you know, people have heard of Wim Hof. There's mm -hmm. some really great breath sure. exercises that you can do to supersaturate. A lot of us naturally are shallow breathers, mm -hmm. and we can actually breathe in more deeply and hold and exhale. This will actually calm you down. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you ever catch yourself, go, wow, I'm breathing really shallow. I'm, I'm getting in maybe like a half a liter, right? Mm -hmm. Where I should be getting in a couple liters of mm -hmm. oxygen. So check yourself before you wreck yourself. Make sure you're <laughs> breathing well, right. okay? Breathing well. And if you're ever nervous before something, mm -hmm. deep breaths in and out. And there's a reason everybody says, calm down, breathe mm -hmm. deep. We get more oxygen in this way. So if you're gonna ground, do some meditative deep breathing. And, mm -hmm. I, and I absolutely recommend the Wim Hof's protocol okay. and it's you know it's right deep breaths in mm -hmm. deep breaths out until your okay. very last breath i think it's about 20 inhales and exhales then you hold yep on an exhale and you really hold as long as you can yep then you inhale okay and hold as long yep. as you can this will spike the immune system big yep. time okay. good luck getting the flu or or the cold because, and i know a lot of people are going and the reason crazy. That there's good luck getting the flu or a cold is that those things need uh, oxygen will kill them, correct? Is yep. that one of the reasons? Oxygen yep. is a pretty powerful thing to kill bacteria, different really things that are detrimental to our system. All disease states and death, mm -hmm. by definition, is lack of oxygen. Lack of oxygen. Think about yeah. that for a second. Mm -hmm. When we die, it's because we didn't get oxygen. Mm -hmm. Our last breath, mm -hmm. that's it, we're done. And so I can't say oxygen is actually gonna prevent you from getting the flu or the cold, right? right. You're gonna catch it. You're gonna get that. You're gonna get mm -hmm. whatever virus is lingering around, we're not gonna go there. But let's just say you get it. Is the army, the immune system, right. are they ready? Right. Are they ready to rock? And for example, every molecule of alcohol kills three molecules of oxygen. Is that right? So hello, you're killing how much me right O2 now. do you want in there to defend you? Gotcha. So if you're thinking, oh, you know, we're gonna go celebrate tonight and we're gonna yeah. get drunk, well, why do you think you feel this way the next day? You're oxygen deprived. You're killing if you were me right to just now. put on an oxygen mask and <laughs> breathe for about 20 minutes, hangover gone. Okay. Sodium bicarbonate and maybe a little bit of ibuprofen for some people, but that sodium bicarb helps with the oxygen transport. Okay. First of all, 
But if you can get oxygen like you have, mm -hmm. or like our system, right, yep. where we breathe oxygen while we exercise, game changer. Okay, so here we go. So, that doesn't mean you should go drink more alcohol. All right. Because we have the antidote. Right. We need to look at this as yeah. preventative. We, yep. we want to keep our body's alert system completely solid. I'm just glad that I have some permission that. to continue to have a little tequila. Yeah, yeah, wine. yeah. Well, so, now that you know you've got. Yeah, and by the way, and I know you drink wine, so I know that it's okay. Uh, you, you so here we go. We're going to get, you guys, this is like, I love delivering to you stuff where you're going, whoa, right? Like, whoa. So we did magnetism. Basic magnetism is put your feet on the ground, walk around, get some of the earth's charge. Magnetism on steroids is a superhuman protocol where you lay, uh, lay on this pad and you're getting this really substantial charge that's a factor of a bazillion times. It's a, it's a, that's my term, not his. It's not a scientific term. But you're actually getting a supercharged amount of magnetism into your body, ion therapy. So then secondly is oxygen. You can, the, the basic plan is to do something where you've increased your oxygen intake. Also you can do breathing exercises, Wim Hof breathing exercises. Now the one, and then there's also hyperbaric oxygen, which I would say is like level two. We'll talk about that in a minute. But level three is what you have me doing and others, which is I go from right from the pad and I go right down and I start in a really a 90 to 93% sort of pure oxygen state yeah. where I'm breathing out of a tank. Yeah that we're gonna show on the YouTube right now as I'm increasing my heart rate, as I'm doing some cardio. So you take us through what EWAT is right. and what step two of the protocol is. And as this could be a huge deep dive. I'm gonna to try to keep Let's it simple. Do it. So EWAT, exercise with oxygen therapy. Exercise with oxygen it's therapy. It's not a brand, it's an acronym for a process. Mm -hmm. And there are devices that let you do EWAT. Mm -hmm. We have something called Hypermax Oxygen. And what you do is you have a generator that fills up this big bag. Yep. Right, 900 liters. And once that's full, you wear a mask. And then you gun it on your bike. You do HIT, high intensity interval training for about 15 minutes. Yep. And the goal is every breath is about 90 plus percent oxygen. It doesn't matter really what the purity levels mm -hmm. are. North of 50% back in the day when Van Arden did his studies in, in the lab, which defined the entire EWAT as we know it today. He did hyperthermia with patients sitting still breathing 50% right. and he watched hundreds of disease states completely normalize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. I mean, the book mm -hmm. Oxygen Multi-Step Therapy will outlines this with amazing clinical data. Mm -hmm. you, you can't argue it. So you're going to exercise for 15 minutes while you're breathing 93% oxygen and every three minutes you're going to gun it mm -hmm. for about 30 seconds and you're gonna get your heart rate up as high as you can. Mm -hmm. Keep it under safe levels, you know, 80% mm -hmm. of your max heart rate. And what we're doing is we're pushing oxygen to what we call distal hypoxic tissues, tissues, tissues farthest from the heart. And when the oxygen gets into the microvessels and capillaries, under pressure, it actually crosses over the endothelial lining. And when that happens, the microvessel goes from this narrowed you know, eighth inch diameter plumbing in your house back to normal. Mm -hmm. There's a switch mm -hmm. where we restore microvessel. It's like roto rooter for the body mm -hmm. and has a one year durable effect. Hyperbaric can't do that. Okay. So that was the big takeaway from Van Arden studies was we can restore microvessels that have been narrowing in everybody for years. The older we get, mm -hmm. the, the, the lane that our car drives in narrows. And mm -hmm. at one point the car gets stuck and can't move. Mm -hmm. So we can blow that out. And if we look at most viruses and bacteria, they're anaerobic. They can't handle oxygen. Mm -hmm. They die. Mm -hmm. They are, that is the antidote right there. I mean, okay. look at everybody that goes into a hospital, it's the first thing they put on them. In an ambulance, what's the first thing they put on them? Oxygen. Yeah. They're not out of breath. They need, they're in shock. This becomes an analgesic. It's a pain yeah. reliever. And it's the most critical element for life. Without yeah. oxygen, we're passed out in five minutes and eight to 10, we're brain dead crazy so guys so so step two is oxygen so in your own wellness your own health get to investigate the benefits of oxygen so when we've done the magnetism though earlier my understanding is it's opened up my capacity to receive this oxygen by a pretty significant factor by between 30 and 900 percent okay so massive factor to receive more yeah. oxygen i do 15 minutes on this bike about every three minutes i do a sprint for about 30 seconds is how i've been doing it anyway and you can go longer because i'm surprised you don't do the whole 15 minutes of sprinting. i do no, no i do okay i didn't know that i could do that i've been <laughs> max doing it sort of, okay i'll max out shoot <laughs> it's time of all people right so so i i then do that i've got this oxygen intake uh, the factors of guys of just the applications of this stuff is not just your fitness and your wellness and i'll tell you 
visual what I felt from doing this, but, and again, I'm not selling any protocol at all. I'm selling you on all investigating magnetism in your life, oxygen in your life, and the last part is light, which we'll cover in a minute. So earth, wind, and fire, just so you can remember it. How you get there is up to you. Jason's not here, so I'm just, we're giving you access to potential ways to get it on my term steroids, which is interesting coming from me. So, uh, <laughs> but the oxygen piece of it, this notion that we're reaching these these organs or these parts of the body that are furthest from the heart is significant. If it is true that these vessels can become larger again and wider, the applications of that are memory, Alzheimer's, heart attacks. There's all kinds of potential benefits to these vessels being healthier and more open than beginning to close in our life, right? We, this is a significant yeah, and thing. And one, one analogy I want to throw out here real quick is if, if I were to tool the, take the pool pump, Mm -hmm. out, gone, just shut it down. What is that water gonna look like in about two weeks? Mm. It's gonna be a cesspool of algae, mm. okay? When you're not doing PEMF, that's what your blood's looking like. Mm. Think about PEMF as turning the pool pump back on. But because we're raising cell voltage, we can separate those cells. So many people's oxygen and ion transport, right? Sodium, mm -hmm. potassium going in and out of the cell, which causes an electrical potential called zeta potential, how charged that cell is. If we can't get that in and out and that transport, cell dies, mm -hmm. apoptosis. Mm -hmm. Cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up you. You want to protect that cell at all costs mm. because that's the foundation of your entire body. Why don't we do hyperbaric oxygen then? Well, I want to finish a note. Okay. So when we charge that cell, we open up the window of opportunity between 30 and 900% for oxygen to get in. Mm -hmm. We're not getting 900% more oxygen into the body. We're just allowing that cell to get between 30 and nine times more oxygen because that's how impeded, that's how blocked it was. Mm. Think about it. There's 240 million hemoglobin proteins in a red blood cell. Mm -hmm. and we should be able to dock four molecules of O2 each. Okay. So that means some people only get maybe a couple million molecules of oxygen, it's terrible. Okay, so when this we're getting the, when we're getting this oxygen, we can get it through doing breathing techniques. That's a baseline level to do it. We can do it, the, the Wim Hof stuff and other things like that, which are wonderful, by the way. I do them. Uh, two, we could do hyperbaric oxygen, or three, we can do it. So you, I mean, and by the way, Jason sells hyperbaric oxygen chambers and yeah. stuff, so this yeah. is not something that you're against, but why is this a level higher and what what is maybe some of the potential dangers you'd shared with me if someone's doing hyperbaric oxygen without exercise it potentially right so we got to be careful with this because i do like hyperbaric for what we call the indications uh for you which is diabetes right ne peripheral neuropathy burn victims stroke that's where I, why, where you're going to be put into a hyperbaric healing after thing. surgery correct yeah yep. absolutely especially some of the larger hyperbarics, we can get in there and sit upright. For mm -hmm. women that might get major operation, mm -hmm. right? Breast augmentation, full tummy tuck, they can't lay down yet, okay? Mm -hmm. Not for a while. They have to stay semi-upright or pretty much flat. So when you're looking at hyperbaric, it's for deconditioned individuals, typically. Deconditioned, yeah. okay. Um, I, however. Because a lot of athletes do it though. Yeah, a lot of athletes will do it. And, and they'll also train at altitude to increase red blood cells. So they have greater oxygen compar car uh, carrying capacity. So when they come to sea level, they have more blood cells, mm -hmm. more red blood cells than their competition. That gives them an oxygen advantage. That's what doping is. Exactly. Right? And PEMF therapy, I won't mention the exact brand name of PEMF, but our device can deliver the same results, if not better. Race across America. Cyclists go from California to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And when, when Team USA did mm -hmm. this race, they beat their peers by six hours. Hmm. That's a huge disparity between men hmm. because they did PEMF while they were in, on the chaser van, okay. relaxing. They were increasing their oxygen uptake, improving profusion of blood. Okay. So they didn't have the fatigue. They didn't have the, the muscle outstripping, right? Yep. The oxygen and yep. the, 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 the pain that you would normally get. Yep. So an athlete, if he does superhuman protocol, yep. he can train harder and longer in the gym and yep. recover way faster with a lot less delayed onset muscle soreness. And Doms there, will drop. There's a significant portion of my audience that are athletes and fitness people. There's a significant portion that isn't. Yeah. But for that portion, I think it's important for you all guys to hear is that this notion of, you know, I'll, I'll just say this for me. We're going to go to the third protocol in a minute, but I'm stronger 
Yeah. My recovery is better since I've been doing this and I've done hyperbaric oxygen. I felt some benefit from doing it, but this has been significantly better just application for me. I want to go back to the red blood cell thing for a second, just for my own. I told you this before. Some of us that are under treatment for our hearts or have a potential thickening of the blood through other therapies that we're on, we don't want lots more red blood cells. So is this PEMF giving me more red blood cells like what we're talking about no. when we're doping? No, or is it simply separating them? No, it's just it's just charging them. Okay. When we put our cell phone on our, on our induction charger, we don't get another battery. We okay. just charge that battery. Okay. So all we're doing is charging what's there. Okay. In order to get more red blood cells, you've got to go to altitude and the body goes, hey, kidney kicks in erythropoietin, tells the bone marrow to make a few more red blood cells. That's how we adapt. Okay. And even if you're at altitude for a short period, you're not gonna adapt, you can't. Okay. So that's why you'll see some athletes tent their entire bed. They're gonna sleep in hypoxia. Yeah. They're gonna go down to 14% oxygen or less. Yeah. And they're going to increase their, their red blood cells so they have a, a big oxygen advantage. Going back to hyperbaric, because I, I, I did want to go to a point yeah. and then I want to finish that. Hyperbaric, when you're in a machine such as a compression device, mm -hmm. 1.4 atmospheres mm -hmm. or higher, your resting heart rate's quite low. In yeah. fact, it's as low as it normally is. But you're getting a lot of extra oxygen that you didn't earn. You didn't make the CO2 to earn the new inbound O2. If I were to go work out right now, if we were to get on our treadmill, the CO2, O2 equilibrium is there. The ratio. The ratio yeah. is normal. Mm -hmm. In hyperbaric, it, hyperbaric, it's abnormal. And I'm not saying that this is dangerous, but there has been some, there's been a study that showed that a very specific cancer cell line went into oncogenesis. It made it worse. Okay. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. It's very rare. So that I'm not a big fan of that taunting that ratio to play games with my body. But if I had, if I was a burn victim, yeah, stroke, diabetes, yep. I might do 20 or 30 sessions. Yep. And and that's it. Mm -hmm. And well, it's, maintenance is okay. But we're really discussing, I don't, again, I'm acting like I know more about this than I do, but we're saying basically oxygen under load is better than oxygen without any Absolutely. load. Absolutely. So get your heart rate up where you're getting the Absolutely. oxygen and it's better. So those of you that are looking for the baseline stuff that you can't afford this big bucks stuff, a big bucks is a relative statement, by the way, then you want to be doing oxygen under load if you can't, some way, some shape. And by the way, I don't know everyone's budget, but I don't think the mats are that expensive. I don't think the oxygen piece of it is necessarily no. that expensive. The third piece is relatively pricey, but it's more and more common. So, so we've got basically so far on our super- I think it's more expensive to be sick. It is more expensive to be sick. That's, you sound like you're selling right there for the first time, but um, it's okay. So the first thing is we wanna make sure we've got magnetism. We wanna make sure that we're doing what we can for you know ion transport, uh, separating our red blood cells, alkalizing our blood. Two, we want to get oxygen. If we can, we want oxygen under load of some type. Third now is light. Yeah. Okay. Uh, specifically here, we're going to talk about red light therapy. That's the third part of the superhuman protocol. And this is where it gets really interesting because red light therapy, I bet you there's 20% of the audience that's heard some variation of red light somewhere. Yeah. So why yeah. red light next and what does red light therapy do? Well, wow. so P, it's also known as PBM, mm -hmm. photobiomodulation. If you want to look up science of this, you, you search PBM in the journals. So, and it's a deep subject. I'm going to do my best to keep it simple. So light or photons, right, when they get absorbed like the sun, when, mm -hmm. when a plant absorbs sun, that creates photosynthesis. That's how we can take energy and, and convert it in usable form, and the plant can grow without the sun. Say goodbye to the plant, unless you're a mushroom. Um, so... <laughs> Bottom line is certain wavelengths of light. What is a wavelength? Mm -hmm. First of all, red, which is the visible. Ours is 635 nanometer. That just means on the wavelength spectrum of light, 635 is red and it's visible. Red hits the skin and doesn't go much deeper than you've got epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. Okay? Three layers. We can get through all that with red light, and that's great. We'll help tighten skin make it look really supple. We can actually resolve quite a few concerns with the top of skin mm -hmm. with red light. In our bed, we go way deeper. We go into near infrared, mm -hmm. invisible light, right? This is 810 nanometer, 850, 940. These are the things you can't see. You'll notice in your bed, I think you even called me up and went, hey man, 75% of these bulbs are out. Right. No, that's, that's <laughs> the real important light. <laughs> the invisible stuff's going into your muscles. Mm. 
right. and your organs and bone, mm -hmm. and tissue way beyond the skin. And so what happens with light when it gets absorbed by a cell, in particular a cell that has a mitochondria, because a red blood cell does not have this. Okay. Mitochondrial functioning cells in tissue, organs, skin, etc., they make ATP, energy, yes. adenosine triphosphate. And when light gets absorbed by the cell, there's a phenomenon that occurs and it kicks the free radicals out. Here we go. Yep. They're sitting on something called cytochrome C oxidase. It's a very sticky chromophore. It's an enzyme at the end of what's called electron transport chain, where, mm -hmm. where the factory, powerhouse factory makes things, especially energy. And this sticky chromophore has an affinity to connect to free radicals, mm -hmm. mitochondrial nitric oxide. Now this is a bad thing, but sometimes it can be overwhelming and then it blocks oxygen into the cell. Okay. That's a bad thing. So okay. if, we can, can't, if we can't get oxygen into a cell, a cell can actually go rogue and become cancerous. Okay. okay it's gotta use other methods to make energy. You don't want that. You, need, you want it to use oxygen to make two, molecule, uh, two cycles of, of ATP or 32. So you're either a two horsepower car or you're a 32 horsepower car when you do light. So think of this, let's say we go out to dinner tonight, all the lights are off and the thieves come in. Yep. Mitochondrial nitric oxide They're the thieves. thieves. They come in, but your floodlights go on. Mm -hmm. And they go, ah, blinded by the light, they run for the hills. Mm -hmm. And they're running blind and they run into the fence. Mm -hmm. In our body, that fence is the artery. Okay. Our nitric oxide in an artery are friends. Helps relax that artery, phasodilates improves blood flow, okay. but now the bad guys are kicked out so oxygen can come back into the house again Got it. and make ATP happily ever after. Why is this ATP so critical? You can't regenerate, you can't restore, you have no, so you can't flex a muscle if you can't make ATP. Mm -hmm. If you're short on calcium and magnesium, calcium flexes, magnesium relaxes, you can't do anything without ATP and most people are cycling at two. They need to be cycling at 32. Mm -hmm. So we have to incorporate the uh, oxygen transport at the highest possible level. So here's why we do light last. So PEMF charges that cell, separates it, all cells. Magnetism. Exactly, yep. magnetism first. Got Put, it. Puts the baseline back to normal. Yep. Your blood flow looks like that of a 10 year old kid, a yep. child again. Then we supersaturate with oxygen. oxygen. We exercise with oxygen, yep. okay? And tissue and plasma have a ton of O2. Now when light hits the cell, and it tells the free radical to get out and go to hell, yep. right? Oxygen can come back in and Got save it. the day. So we're setting up each technology to potentiate the next. Got it. So PMF puts oxygen on steroids. PMF and oxygen puts light on steroids. Mm -hmm. So if I were to take all the oxygen out of you mm -hmm. and dealkalize you, put you south of seven pH, now you're acidic, mm -hmm. light's not as effective. Light's gonna have a very difficult time. Yes, that chromophore will absorb light. Yes, we'll have a reaction. Yes, we'll kick mitochondrial nitric oxide mm -hmm. out. We're not gonna optimize it. Yeah. So this earth, wind, and fire I developed, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't want the yeah, music not a trademark, group, I don't a want thought. the group to come after me, yep. but one of my favorite bands. But I, I came up with that name to help people remember the order. Yep. And we've got clinics all over the world where you can go do superhuman protocol. That's what I want to say to everybody. So you may not be able to afford all these beds. You can find it. Chiropractors have been, to some extent, using some of this magnetism and some of this red light stuff for a little while now. You've been oh, able yeah. to find Jason's machines in different places local to you. But I want to stay on a little bit of the red light a little bit because I want to just make sure, I want people going, all right, I like this. I'm almost going to review the concepts. You want to increase this ATP. Uh, guys, because it's basically the energy that you're living off of, right? There's, it's an energy factor. Nitric oxide in your body. First off, what happens with the red light? I understood it, but I want to understand it a little bit better. And what is its function? Yeah. I, I, it, specifically, because I always hear, hear this, but what is its function in our body? Red light? Yeah, no, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide. oxide. Well, it's, it's, all, it's ultimately a vasodilator. Okay. It's what helps sexual performance for men. Correct. It's what helps improve blood flow and perfusion. If we don't have an adequate amount of this, we do not have the, the arteries relaxing. Mm -hmm. We don't have good blood flow. Mm -hmm. So when you're low on this, you have impeded blood. Now you can't make more nitric oxide with light. I hear a company saying that, yeah. oh yeah, you know, we, we're gonna boost. You're, you're disassociating the existing mitochondrial okay. nitric oxide mm -hmm. from those mitochondrial functioning cells mm -hmm. and they're getting pushed out. Okay. And so there's more of it to utilize. Got it. That's it, we're putting it back where it belongs. Got it. 
okay? okay. So yeah, That's, it's this is skate situation, chemical. okay. So, yeah. so guys, the combination of these three things mean what? So I know red light therapy, by the way, guys, when we say red light, this isn't hot light or anything like that. The fact that the bed that Jason uses, I don't wear goggles or anything like that. There's no damage to my eyes that I'm aware of. But, you know, skin, hair, pain, recovery, are there any other benefits in addition to those that you would say that come with this? Hundreds. Okay. So you think about this. When, so when you open up an apple, an apple it turns mm -hmm. brown, right? Yes. That's oxidation at its purest form. We call that reactive oxygen species. Okay. Or, or a piece of metal mm -hmm. out in the salt water, it's gonna rust. An mm -hmm. Another example of oxidation. So when we open an apple and it starts to brown, we can slow that browning by putting what? Lemon juice on it, okay. right? Think of light as lemon juice for the cells. Mm -hmm. It's gonna slow down the oxidative stress, which is, a, again, an overwhelming amount of those mitochondrial nitric oxide, right? Mm -hmm. And it's gonna stop inflammation. Inflammation is the root of all disease. Mm -hmm. It's the root of all pain. It's mm -hmm. the root of everything. Mm -hmm. So if we can stop inflammation in its tracks, mm -hmm. I, I say this to people all the time, if I were to open you up and look at your aging wheel, Everybody has an aging wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's might be 150 running towards the grave. Mm -hmm. If you could put the brakes on that aging wheel, mm -hmm. you would. And you'd want that aging wheel to stop. Very difficult to do. But I think I can get mine down about five miles an hour from where it was, which was probably 100. Because mm -hmm. I work 100 hours a week. I know. Right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's a very stressful lifestyle because I want to serve everybody all the time, and I want to make sure yeah. everybody's getting what they need. You do, yeah. And you, you drive that all day, and you worry. And I hate to say this, too, and worry is like a, a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but you don't go anywhere. But you still do it, yeah. right? And that worry causes stress, mm -hmm. inflammation, pain, and it leads to pathology. Yeah. It leads to symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it's really just a matter of calm, calm down that inflammation. So red light. You, you could do C-reactive protein. You could, you could do some blood labs right after red light, and you can measure CRP dropping. You can yeah. look at red blood cells, dark field microscopy, and you can see the, the cells changing right before your eyes, especially after PMF. Mm. If someone goes, I don't believe in this PMF stuff, mm. okay, do dark field right before PMF and do dark field after and yeah. tell me that that doesn't look like somebody else's blood. Okay. I, I will bet them a free system okay. if they don't see those results. Mm -hmm. But light, near infrared and red that we get from the sun, we're predominantly blocked from it because it's not enough. There's not enough and it's not strong enough. Mm -hmm. In order for us to get the equivalent of what we get out of your light bed, you'd have to be butt naked in front of the sun for two hours during the summer, front and back. Mm -hmm. And now you're exposed to UVA, UVB, yep. and All now we have skin stuff. damage. By the way, speaking of skin damage, one of the benefits I've seen from the red light, I don't seem to burn. No, you're thickening the skin. Is that right? So you're, you're improving your ability to protect the skin from right. the damaging waves. And, and again, everybody, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making claims. I've been on this very short term. Why did I do today's show? Let me explain to everyone. Let's step back for a second. I did today's show because I've been blessed and fortunate enough that I can afford access to some of the best medical information in the world. You know, I've had that with my heart with Dr. Amy Donine. I brought David Sinclair on the show. I've had Andrew Huberman on about your mind and your brain. And he's a neuroscientist. I've had all kinds of different people on, you know, intermittent fasting, all the experts in the world in these things. And I've, you know, I'm fascinated with slowing down that aging clock. I'm fascinated with being more fit at 50 than I was at 30. I'm, I'm uh, also had some health issues. As you know, genetically, I wasn't born with the perfect, uh, the uh, hand dealt to me. And so anti-aging, living longer, living better is all fascinating to me. And I wanna share what I'm learning or what I'm getting exposed to with the millions of people that listen or watch this show because I love them and I want yeah. that for them as well. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to share you today. I want everyone to know my intent in doing this. Thank you. I don't make any specific claims one way or the other about it, but what I can tell you is I always wanna bring you what I believe is the cutting edge information. I believe I'm sitting next to the cutting edge dude in the world on these topics. And that's why he's here today. You are gonna do your own research on PEMF, on magnetism, on earthing. Those are all things you can research. You can research the separation of red blood cells. You can research oxygen and the benefits of that oxygen under load. You can, be, you can research the benefits of red light therapy. You, all of the different things that we've covered today. And obviously things like ATP, these are topics you should inform yourself on. This isn't 30 years ago where it's just about protein, creatine and drink some water, right? Like yeah. things have evolved yet most people are still discussing these basic things. So you'll make your own decisions, find this information 
in your own way. But I want you all to live longer, healthier, and, and better. And I'm hoping that today uh, does that. Now, here's the tough question. I was thinking about this this morning. If all this works, <laughs> and we're basically going back in time, I wonder yeah. if anyone's ever asked you this before. If all this works, you know, more of the magnetism, uh, you know, more oxygen, more light that we're not getting, why do we live longer now than we did then? Why do we live? I think the numbers are skewed, actually. Well, because I got we you. don't have T-Rex. <laughs> okay, T-Rex. But, I mean, that's an interesting question, isn't it? I mean, what, it, they didn't live as long then when they were getting more. Um, but, no, but so I think we lived healthier okay. lives back then because we didn't have the Dust Bowl. We didn't have the depletion of the soil. Mm -hmm. And today's salad is massively deficient in the nutrients, mm -hmm. enzymes, and minerals that we had back in the day. So when people say things like, well, you know, my grandmother and grandfather never had these problems, yeah, because they had actual nutrients in their food. Okay. Okay. We're just now starting to realize that, and we're on that boat now. We're going, okay, nutrition is really important, mm. and we're looking at organic foods, and we're starting to figure out ways to lengthen telomeres. Mm. We're starting to look at ways to, or biomarkers that tell us how we're aging. But ultimately, if, if we look at the mortality rate, most of that data is coming from I'm, I hate to say this, but at inaccurate databases. Okay. And we are living, we are living longer, but that's because we're being driven by a medical community that's what I thought you were that can, can stave off some life-threatening yes. diseases. Yep. But that quality of that lifespan, that additional lifespan is terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, I said to somebody the other day, you know, you were born superhuman and you were conditioned and guided into mediocrity, mm. okay? I have a theory, um, babies are, when we're born, there's a reason we, we scream our lungs off when we come out. We have a feeling we're gonna be force-fed the standard American diet and our health is gonna <laughs> okay. be based on we drugs. Already know the minute we're we way out. better off back inside. Yeah, we've been listening and watching it for nine months in our mother's womb. I thought, I feel like the answer to that to some extent is the combination of the two, that we live longer now because the advances in technology and medical science and some medication, surgical techniques, those different things. But if you could combine these things with the access and the knowledge that we have now, it's just a more you know, evolve society with better technology. This I don't stuff think is... we're living longer with better quality. I do mm -hmm. not. I mm -hmm. absolutely don't. I, th I think we were extending life right now. But if we look at the last 10, 15 years of that quality of life, yep. it's in an old age home, needlessly. Yeah, or very unhealthy, very stagnant. Um, yeah. I agree with you. And I... I think we can go way beyond 100 with amazing quality, be able to ride a bike, still be able to work out. I mean, look at the five blue zones that exist around the world, from Greece to California. You have people that are walking around barefoot, they're eating from the land, and they don't have Parkinson's, fibromyalgia, ischemia, heart disease. It doesn't exist. Hmm. It just doesn't exist. How look long do you think we can live? Some of the decent. I mean, I mean, you go back to some of the ancient scripture, and they're they're showing beings living hundreds and hundreds of years, hmm. even longer. So you think someone can live 120, 150 years at pretty healthy potential? I'm going to give it a shot. I know you are. It's one of the uh, one of your obsessions. I can just say this for me. I mean, I'm 50 years old, and I am stronger, more flexible, and uh, feel healthier than I did when I was 30. And so I almost feel like I haven't hit that point in my life because of my pursuit of these things that has got me to be on the backside of that number yet. Yeah. That's at least how I feel. Uh, I hope that that's true. There's things I need to fix. People, my audience knows that my heart rate's too high. I've had some heart issues. It's one of the other reasons that I'm working on these things, but it's people like you that give me confidence that that's, that that's really true. And I want to encourage the audience to do your research on these topics because I feel like today's one of the more valuable shows we've ever done that could extend or even save some of your lives and the quality of your life, depending on your age. You athletes, you want to recover? You want to train faster. There's oh, the yeah. basic techniques, the basic things that this will deliver to you. You'll feel almost instantaneously as I did. You wanted to jump in and say something. Yeah, I want to mention something, and I don't. I didn't want to go public with this, but I was born with a congenital defect. We call it a mitral valve prolapse. So mm -hmm. it's where the, the valve's a little floppy. Okay. okay. And it can get worse as you age. And a couple of years ago, I began to see symptoms from it. Mm. You feel lightheaded, like you have low blood sugar. And it, we've known about this. I've, I've known, and then they said, oh, don't worry about it until you need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And so a couple years ago, they said, you know, it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. And the doctor, the cardiologist looked at me and he said, can you, is there any way you can get a little more oxygen? No way. <laughs> and I went, absolutely, I can. Yeah. I said, I, I do a protocol where I can supersaturate the blood plasma mm -hmm. and I 
fire up the red blood cells and I can do red light therapy and stop all the inflammation. He was like, what, how, how, what is all this about? Mm. Amazing how he's never heard of this because they're so focused wow. on disease mm. and cutting and repairing and or prescribing a drug and look mm. up pharmacology, it's the study of poison. Mm. Every drug is poisonous in the right dose and we're given just a small enough dose to stop a symptom so you think everything's good but you have to stay on that and mm. that could cause a cascade of, of ongoing problems. So 2019 they said you won't make it past the end of 2019, you need that surgery wow. within the next 90 days. And I just said no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing superhuman really hard. Mm. And I went back and did my last echo and they just said we don't know what you're doing, but your ejection fraction's looking pretty good. You know, when you want to get the surgery, get the surgery because you wow. can't fix an architectural problem per mm. se. When, when the valve's got an issue, you can take all the supplements all day long, but if you can reduce the inflammatory condition and you can improve the oxygen absorption and uptake to the 11 organ systems, you can stave off a lot of the symptoms Crazy. that would cause or that is a result of mitral valve prolapse. So I'm Thank not telling somebody, that. go do this, avoid the surgery. Mm -hmm. But I have delayed the surgery. It's open heart, you know, it's bypass, lung bypass, heart deal. bypass. It's, a, it's open heart. We're stuff open. And ironically, yeah. I'll be doing the Da Vinci procedure, That's um, which is by another company. And, and the doctor, Alfredo Trento, the best in the world. Mm. He's done more of these surgeries than anybody. So I'm, my, hands are, uh, my heart is in good hands. Yeah. And hopefully he'll be doing it this year or early next year. Thank but you. Thank, thank you for you sharing to that. Superhuman. I'm, I'm still here. Thank you, brother, for sharing that. You bet. Today's been remarkable. I had a bunch more things I wanted to get to. Are there any disclaimers or qualifiers you would add for anybody under certain treatments or conditions that should avoid any of the things Pregnancy. we talked about? Pregnancy. Light epilepsy. Okay. Because we can adjust the frequency, and that's another thing we need to talk about. Uh, our, we can adjust frequency. Okay. You can, you can go into a sleep frequency in the light bed. I can set you at 10 hertz. Okay, you need to show me how to do and that. And fire that thing up, and okay. I will put you, I'll knock you out while you're in the bed. Okay. okay? Uh, so frequency is important when modulating the body and you get to play with that most light systems don't allow you to play with frequencies it's just a solid on off switch okay uh what was the question any qualifiers uh, pregnancy so yeah pacemakers pacemakers pregnancy and we are using such a low gauss such a epilepsy. low magnetism it's probably not a problem but you always want to check with your doc pregnancy epilepsy on the light okay. other than that no other contraindications okay. you should always talk to your doctor and say hey this is what i'm doing yep this is not designed to prevent, cure, or treat anything. We can't go there. We cannot mm -hmm. make any medical claims. Um, but what you're doing are the basic fundamentals. You have a universal right to this. Oxygen, magnetism, light, it created life. Yeah. It sustained it. And we unknowingly disconnected from that which has also declined. Right. We didn't know it's Earth magnetism's being declined. Mm. It's been declining for the last 4,000 years. Mm. We didn't know we're supposed to get certain wavelengths of light. Mm. We didn't realize the oxygen was laden with hydrocarbon from industry. Mm. Okay, and that's a whole other subject, talking mm. about clean air and ozone. I mean, we mm. can go for days on that. So pay attention to your body. Your body's telling you something's not right. Don't, I'm not saying you don't go see your doctor, but sometimes it's just a matter of walking around barefoot. Okay breathing deep and exposing the body to that which created us. Yep, and that's the base level all the way up to what we've talked about today. I hope what today did was give you guys a whole different or a whole new perspective and some things to think about, read about, watch this show again on in terms of your anti-aging, your wellness, your healing, your recovery, your overall state of being. And I feel like you delivered on that today, Jason. Thank so you. thank you. They go to davinciMedicalUSA.com if they want to get involved with any of the things that you're doing. You can Google all the different PMF, PEMFs and all the different terms that we went through today. Uh, your ATP, all of that stuff. You can look through all of that stuff and learn about it today. And from me to you, I hope today served you. I hope it was something that you feel compelled to show with people, share with people. And hope it's got you thinking and talking. I hope it's got you questioning. Hope it's got you discussing it with people that you trust and getting their opinion as well. So Jason Tabo, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Ed. Great to have Stay you, Stay superhuman. You crushed this. I am working on that staying superhuman. And for the rest of you, I want to ask you to share this with as many people as you can. Fastest growing show in the world for a reason. And uh, God bless you all and Max out. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.